1963, President John F. Kennedy uttered the famous line, Ich bin ein Berliner, which of course means, uh, I am a donut. Right? See, welcome what he back trying to, to say oh, was, uh, But welcome back to my channel, man. It's your boy Alpha, man. I know I've been MIA for a couple of days, so I'm going to start posting these daily, though. But, yeah, man. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you're new to my channel, hit that sub button. We one person away from um, 400 subs. Yeah, man. We out here grinding. Let's get turned back. Wait till the end of the show. Bow. You show up, you can get a free life wrong on skip card or even the power prize that doubles your win earnings here at the cash out. Just remember, you got to use it within 24 hours or you lose it. So play the rest of uh, tonight or the first game tomorrow. Let's do some shout outs. Our first shout out comes from uh, David White. He tweets, my mom at the Phillies game playing the cash show. Hey, way to go, mom. I like you seeing, seeing you <laughs> win some money as you play. And don't bet on sports. Question, or shout out to Donald L. Ritter. Wants a shout out to loyal, loyal players Donnie and Bo in Miamisburg, Ohio. <laughs> that sounds like a fun place, my uh, Miamisburg. And there's another Bo there. Interesting. Shout out three is Tim Hoff. Who wants a shout out to his wife Rosa for their ninth wedding anniversary. They're celebrating by playing the cash show. Hey, here's the nine more, you guys. That's it. That's all. Let's have a ball. On with the show. And away we go. All right. Question number one coming at you right away is... Alaska is located in which extremity of North America? Southeast, Northwest, or Southwest? Nice, easy, South slow east. pitch for you guys coming here. I mean, you can't really go much further in this direction, true, until you start heading Southwest. And it is true in some parts of Alaska, you can see Russia from your backyard. So if you find yourself looking over the Bering Strait, you're probably standing in the, our answer, Northwest. Now, Russia was yeah. having a great sale when we bought Alaska from them. Not True enough. story. At a cool $7.2 million in gold. I think that's, that's Hawaii I was thinking of. Eight billion now, but, uh, my eight stupid ass, dollars, man. I'm talking about Hawaii and shit. Uh -huh. man. Uh, all right, question two. What song features a line about the weather outside being frightful? Thriller, stormy weather, or let it snow? Anybody that grew up on Christmas songs should have no trouble with this. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we have no place to go, thriller, weather, stormy, snow. That doesn't have the same ring to it. No, it doesn't at all. Our answer, let it snow. Now, Sammy Kahn and Dewey Stein wrote this song in July 1945 while in Los Angeles. And I believe that any sort of non-sunny weather would be frightful to someone in L.A. Like, oh, no, I have to drive while it's raining. I can say whatever I want about L.A. I used to live there. Question three. <laughs> By what oath do doctors swear when they become doctors? The Hippocratic Oath, the Loyalty Oath, or the Oath of Ephebes? I, rem I would imagine there's a lot of jovial exclamations when they've completed the eight plus years of schooling required to become a doctor, but before that, they gotta raise that right hand and do the Hippocratic Oath, our answer. Now, included in the oath is the most essential promise to help the sick and do no harm. While the oath is not exactly legally binding, I'd run, not walk, out of any doctor's office who tells you they didn't take it, all right? That doesn't happen. Question four, we want some more. How many sides does a nonagon have? Four, nine, or sixteen? Speaking of nonagons, we've got Rock Jack, Idaho, and a house, and then Loot Ninja. Hello, Bo. Hello, Loot Ninja. Thanks for playing. And did you know how many sides a nonagon has? Uh, if you know your etymology, this will help you here. The answer we're looking for is nine. Formerly formed irregularly from the Latin nonus, meaning ninth. This will be the first. And lastly, <laughs> likely last time you need to know that fact, unless we have a polygon-themed episode of the cash show, of course, which we've been talking to you about in excruciating detail. Question five. Which of these South American countries does not feature a sun on its flag? Brazil, Argentina, or Uruguay? Uruguay. It should be a lot easier See. now that we've got Uruguay. the, uh, what's that big sports thing happening right now? The, 
uh, God, I, gosh, I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Now, rather than featuring the sun like many of its other neighbors, the country opted for something a little more special, our answer being Brazil. Then, uh, uh, they have hello. 27 stars on their flag. Each star represents one of its states, and they are arranged in the same pattern as the night sky over the country. How pretty is that? What? Cash Kitty back again, here to comfort everyone that didn't get that one right. Let's hope you had a free life. Now, let's arrange that winning star pattern and move on to our prize questions. Hey, do you guys want a shout out? Is it your birthday, anniversary? You got a fun story to share? Remember, hit us up on the Twitter sphere. You can use the hashtag CS shout out so that we can easily find it. Now, for daily life and behind the scenes stuff from me, you can hit me up on Instagram at host Bodanner. What up? All right, question six is worth $150. What item was bestowed upon the winners of the ancient Olympic Games? An olive wreath, a golden statue, or three well bred horses? This sounds like a, an alternative, like, 12 Days of Christmas song. Like, on the third day of the Olympics, my olive guy gave to me three well-bred horses. But no, we're looking for an olive wreath for this one. All right, now, according to legend, yes, an olive wreath cut from the sacred tree near Zeus's temple was first instituted as a prize by Hercules for the winner of the running race. As opposed to the walking race, I guess. They just had one one race, like, run, and then we'll have a winner. Question seven, worth another $150. During which month has National Pizza Month been observed since 1984? October, February, or June? Now, this came suggested by the publisher of Pizza Today magazine. Yes, real thing. National Pizza Month first occurred in 1984 for the first, for the month of October. All right, now, Pizza Today is like the Wall Street Journal for pizza professionals. Like, what's new in pepperoni? You heard it here first. <laughs> Nowhere else. Pepperoni all over the place. Where do you get your pepperoni? Uh, it's a real magazine, and it's hard to believe, but it's true. Question eight is worth another $150. Question eight is, Lada cars are produced in what country? Russia, Germany, or England? Germany. Germany, Germany, right, Germany. Got, hey, someone says, uh, Bo, yesterday, Cash Kids took home more than $11 on this game. Ooh, we might even be able to beat that one today, you guys. Yeah, we did have a fantastic first game yesterday. Let's see how we do here. Now, the answer we're looking for, Lada, Russia. It even sounds Russian. Now, in existence since 1970 and originally based off of Fiat sedans, a lot of vehicles are sold as affordable, reliable, and easy to maintain at home. And that is not sexy. But this practical. No? Question nine, worth three hundred dollars. Here we go. Who said that you could give him liberty or give him death? Thomas Paine, Thomas Jefferson, or Patrick Henry? Ivara J1. Singapore here. Singapore's in the house. Oh my gosh, I love Singlish. I love Singlish la so much fun. And if you have a drink, you can like cheers and say suck. Oh man, it's English. Patrick Henry is who we're looking for. I'm pretty sure he never went to Singapore. Patrick Henry spoke his famous and stirring line while convincing the Second Virginia Convention to send troops to fight the Revolutionary War. And so they did. Now speaking of stirring hay, here's a clue for our next game this evening. Two plus two right. equals four. That's our clue. Mm -hmm. Now you know. Okay. Now on to our anti-penultimate question. Number 10. Who was the first U.S. president to have been born a United States citizen? John Tyler, Millard Fillmore, or Martin Van Buren? Yes, remember, of course, in the early days, they I have no clue. Citizens. They all came I did not know this from one. Europe and abroad. All right, now this guy is also the only president for whom English was his second language, with his first language being Dutch. Good old fox. Good old, yes, the, the fox of Kinderhook. They called him Martin Van Buren. There's a street gang named after President Mark Van Buren, and they were just as mean as he was. <laughs> if you ever run into them, just hold up their secret sign. Uh -huh. Do the eight fingers because he was the eighth president. Okay, nope. that's a Seinfeld reference, and it's um, uh, fantastically nerdy. Question 11 is worth $450, and question 11 is, we're almost there. What actor from Back to the Future now has a role in the FX show American Gods? Michael J. Fox, Pablo Schreiber, 
Crispin Glover. B. Now Paolo Shriver Crispin is out because he has no IMDb credits before 2001 and Back to the Future was of course earlier than that and Michael J. Fox has been pretty busy doing a lot of other roles which makes our answer Crispin Glover. The fantastic see. crazy Crispin Glover plays villain Mr. World in FX's fantasy infused drama American Gods series that is based off of the Neil Gaiman novel of the same name. Now remember, we've got Lucky Spin happening after this round, this game, and we're live and again in a little more than an hour with our theme to show. So grab your wands and brooms and join us at Hogwarts, where our show will be fantastically nerdy. <laughs> All right, but now, without further ado, on to our final round. Yes, I do realize that I say final round and our graphic says last round. We're just seeing if you're paying attention. Now we've got 1,970 cash kids still in it to win it. Doing fantastic, y'all. 25,000 plus cash kids waiting for the lucky spin. And $1,641 is what number 12 is worth. Let's do it. What is the name of Korean chef Roy Choi's famous food truck? Is it Crave, Takorean, or Kogi? Takorean. To all my cash kiddos in LA, check out a taqueria on the corner of Palms and Overland. You could drive there no problem as long as it's uh, not raining, of course, you guys. We're looking for Kogi! Yes, did you win some cash to get some Kogi yourself? Korean food being that's actually tied for my third favorite cuisine. You know I'd be spending some on bulgogi and soju. Mm, let's find out who did it with our prize distribution list. This is how much each one of our questions was worth, divided by the number of Barely. cash kids that got it right. Exactly. And we got Heather exactly. Ferry saying, sing the whole show. Bo, 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 sing the whole show. Man, well, that's it, man. See you guys in the next show. It's been your boy, Alpha. I'm gone. Alpha out. Peace.